can hear everything you're saying up here. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, it's 6.11 p.m. Uh, if you wish to speak on an agenda or non-agenda item, please sign up at the sheet near the entrance door to the council chambers. You'll be called to speak during the public comment section. Comments or testimony on agenda items listed under public hearing, public comment will be taken at that time. Roll call, please. Mayor Williams. Here. Dick Anderson. Here. Riley Hoagland. Here. Deanna Hinton. Here. Judy Casper. Here. Susan Walkey. Here. And Councillor Ward. Here. Who answered here. All right, would you please all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you all so much. All right. Um, we're going to move into the consent agenda. Mr. Hinton, you had something? Yes, I'd like to separate them so we can vote on them separately, please. Okay, sure. You can, you can ask to poll whichever one you want. So we have uh, number one, the Oregon Liquor Control Commission request for change of ownership, limited on-premises sale and lesser privilege, Neptune Leasing LLC, DBA, the eventuary, two minutes of meeting, August 8th, 2016. Which one of those did you want? Um, number two, the minutes, please. Two. Okay. Anyone else? Three. I'm sorry? Oh, two. Excuse me. Excuse me. I have an old copy of the original agenda, not the okay. revised agenda. We're pulling number two. So anyone object to number one? Get a motion for that then. Um, do we have a conflict of interest on number one? Oh yeah, I got a conflict of interest. <laughs> 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 a little one. <laughs> just for the record, what type of conflict? Ah, uh, let's see. I'm actual. Yeah, I'm an actual Oregon Liquor Control Commission request for change of ownership. That's me. Because you own the eventuary. Because I own the eventuary. Okay, great. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyone else on that? Okay. So I still need a motion. Move to approve uh, the consent agenda include involving uh, item number one. I'll second it. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, that's number two. I just wanted to abstain because I wasn't on council during those minutes right. when they were taken. Sorry. <laughs> so in the I, audience says they can't hear you. <laughs> okay, I'll speak up. How's that? Yeah. Okay. I just um, asked for this to be pulled because I'd like to abstain from um, voting on minutes because I wasn't on the city council during the time that the minutes were, um, or the meeting that was held that the minutes are full. Okay, anything else? I, I also, I don't know how we're supposed to do this for all the minutes that need to be approved that I was not a part of, what is the proper procedure? Well, if you've read them, you're just approving the minutes as written, not whether you were here or not. So if you've read them, you can vote on this. If you haven't read them, you should say no. I, I, I have not. Okay. And I would, yeah, I would add to that. I think if you watch the meeting and you then read the minutes, I think uh, it would be you could vote. But if you weren't here and you don't feel comfortable, don't vote. I read or, them. Or abstain. Yeah. I, so at each time there are minutes to be approved of. I would like to, at each time I would say I abstain. That's each, the correct procedure. Each time, the, if in fact they're on there and, and you weren't present, you you might want to do that. May I abstain, please? Sure. And you also have the option to amend. If you notice something that wasn't right in them, you can ask for an amendment. Mr. Mayor, yes. I, I did submit some um, typographical errors to the city recorder, and she had a lengthy um, edit to one of one of the paragraphs. Um, it was in an email. Everyone's seen it. Okay. Councilor Casper, are you on board for this? Yes, I read them. Okay. Um, and are you satisfied with the, the changes in there? Councilor Walkie? Yes, yeah. yes, okay. I was. All yeah. right, so then the motion to approve? I move to approve number two of the consent agenda. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Motion carries. Abstain. Yes. Thank you. So noted. Thank you very much for saying that. 
Okay, uh, we are at E, comments from citizens present on agenda, non-agenda items. This is an opportunity for members of the audience to bring to the council's attention any item not listed on the agenda for public hearing or public comment. Comments are limited to five minutes for five minutes and the city recorder will use the light system. Speakers may not yield their times to others and as a general rule, this is not a time for exchange of questions. At the conclusion of this agenda item, a counselor may discuss or raise questions regarding any item presented. The mayor has the authority to reduce the time allowed for comment in accordance with the number of persons present and signed up to speak. I have uh, Mr. Miles Schlesinger. My name is Miles Schlesinger, 212 Southeast Keel Avenue, Lincoln City. I've been a resident here for eight years now, and I have been deeply involved with the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District. I organized the first, first of all, I should say that I've taken my 10-minute speech and whittled it down to uh, the essentials. Uh, I have been involved with the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District, and I organized the first uh, annual jet ski races on Devil's Lake, and this year they'll do the uh, it for the fifth time. But this year the rules are being interpreted differently than they have since 1990. And Bill and Don uh, Cox, who are organizing it now, uh, are employed in other occupations, as most of you are. And they have to get busy now and get the thing organized so it will be as smooth running as it has in the past. So I'm simply asking you to do two things this evening. First, please have a resolution to allow them to have a food vendor at the site and a uh, two or three uh, ski-related uh, vendors so that they can give rides as they have in the past on new uh, equipment or other things that uh, benefit the jet skiing community. And second, I would like you to instruct uh, the city man manager, Mr. Chandler, to have Mr. Ch Apicello prepare the necessary paperwork to get this obsolete deed res uh, restriction that was filed with the, the giving of the land in 1934, 85 years ago, uh, removed. And that is not that difficult a job to do. And uh, it has to go through the county court who gave the land to, uh, gave the, land to uh, the city of Ocean Lake and then it was inherited by the city of Lincoln City. And the, the park has, has amazing potential. You built a probably $40,000 ADA uh, equipped uh, pavilion for entertainment purposes. And uh, I don't think that's legal or any of the other uses except a regatta. And there hasn't been anything called a regatta uh, since I've owned my property at the lake. And it's time to get the records updated so that the park can be used as you deem fit, not as the uh, deed restriction requires. And the deed restriction allows the park to be used only for the regatta, which happened for seven years 
and ended bef at the beginning of World War II. Thank you. Okay. I am completely lost as to what we're okay. talking about. All right. So let, let me give you a little bit of background and what I can and what I cannot talk about. Okay. Um, first of all, uh, Mr. Schlesinger has applied uh, for a permit to be able to use the park, and that was uh, Regatta denied. Park. Regatta Park, yes. And that was denied. Um, and as I understand, Mr. Schlesinger is going to appeal that decision. That will come it to me. It has nothing to do with my fishing permit uh, at this time, which I do know I have 10 <coughs> Hey, Miles, Miles, I'm, I'm going to interrupt. I just want to hear from Ron at this moment, okay? And when that uh, and when that appeal comes in, then it will come to me, and I will uh, make a ruling on that. And I'm not free to discuss that until I actually see the the uh, the appeal. The other part that uh, that uh, Mr. Schlesinger has talked about <coughs> is that there is a restriction on this park based upon the deed that uh, we have inherited. And that, uh, the, and that restricts it both in the use of vendors and in the type of use it is. Now, uh, currently, our attorney and our VCB director and I are working on uh, what can we do about that and how can that be changed. There are some merits to changing that that go beyond uh, Mr. Schlesinger's application and project. Um, but again, we're not far enough down the road uh, to be able to to tell you exactly how that's going to be done. But there are some limitations that would prohibit the type of activity that that he is proposing. Now, uh, we've had the um, Devil's Water Lake District revival for four years. Um, I don't know why we had that because it is a violation of the deed restrictions, as I understand it. Okay. And so that's why, as we've looked at this, we've said that we need to, we're looking at how and if we should change that and bring it back to you. And I think Mr. Apicello wants to add a little bit more. I saw him shaking his head. I may have gotten something wrong. Not-for-profit activities in the park are not a violation of our ordinance um, as long as you're, you don't have a concession. So I myself uh, donated time teaching kayaking there. I was unpaid. It wasn't a violation of concession restriction um, in, in the revival. Um, basically, there's a jurisdictional issue here that, that we have a code, and that code vests special event permits in the administrator, at this time the VCB director, and the appeal from those decisions are taken to the city manager. There is no appeal to the city council, so this is kind of skipping over the city manager and the process for appeal and coming to you and asking you to direct the manager to make a decision a certain way. Just, it's inappropriate. Whether or not the city manager will come to you at a different time and talk about the deed restrictions on this park property and whether or not it would be a good idea to remove them, I, I'm, I think he probably needs to come to you at some point and talk about those all our properties and what deed restrictions we have. But inter intervening, asking you to intervene into a process set forth in your code is just inappropriate. So, What, what are the consequences of violation of this deed restriction? I haven't fully gotten into it yet. Um, so at, at this point, I'm not going to uh, answer. I, I believe that uh, I don't think there's a reverter clause in, in that particular uh, deed restriction. Usually there is some kind of reverter. Um, I think this one may have had a limit on it, but I've only just today looked at the, a deed about it. So, okay. And what kind of time limit are you looking at? Well, the, the event is scheduled. You, through the VCB, have given $5,000 so it can be... Just the date. When, when, what date are you looking at, Miles? May 5th weekend, I think, which is two and a half months from now. We've got to... They are employed in the automotive industry, and they have their work to do. This is a fun project for them. Okay. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. I appreciate it. I imagine we'll hear more on this from you at another date. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Apicello, for your input. Thank you, Miles. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Sharon Cook? Thanks, Miles. And folks, just a reminder, you do not have to give us your address when you come up. Um, 
we are on live TV, and I'd hate to think that someone's watching, wondering who's at your house right now. Hello. Hi. I'm Sharon Cook. Uh, come on, if you sit down, say it into the microphone, please, so it gets on. Sharon record. Cook, and um, I've been in Lincoln City for since 2011. Sharon, could you pull that a little bit closer, please? You can you can move the microphone. You don't have to scoot it closer. Okay. Is that pull, pull good? Pull it close. Pull it over. There you go. Good. Yep. Okay. So the issue that I have and why I'm here, and I'm sorry to say, is that is with your chickens in the city, your ordinances or lack of ordinances. I happen to um, in the city, our property lines are pretty close. There's not. Um, a lot of side yard and uh, with your ordinances I happen to have a chicken coop that is within nine and a half feet of my kitchen window sure, let me and interrupt. guys could I ask you to maybe take the conversation outside if you, if you need to continue thanks I'm sorry go right ahead also it's within 25 feet of the front street so from the front street and um, at the front of my house um, the issue that I'm going to bring up is the health issue uh, I've already um, this summer with the waste of chicken and them not staying in the yard they roam free um, they're in my yard and there is the waste and say it as it is a lot of chicken poop and flies and um, the big problem huge this November was um, I walked into my house and um, I had a maybe over a thousand more so flies in my house that's coming in with my turkey dinner and getting ready for company and uh, somehow uh, maybe walking in uh, or you know doing gardening on the side bringing in maybe the poop from the chicken uh, that you know attracts these flies they're blue bottle flies that are attracted to waste um, happened to lay their eggs you know or hatched in my house and it was horrible I can't tell you how horrible it was uh, also if you um, had one bird in a cage you know how filthy that is uh, let alone farm animals and you allow five chickens in the city um, if a person is, has chickens for the idea of their eggs three chickens that would be if they lay one egg a day that would be 21 chickens of eggs a week that would be plenty of eggs for one family and let alone you five chickens um, so my main concern is coming on for this next summer of course is the odor uh, the smell is horrible uh, I've lived on the farm I know what it's like you know to be with brown farm animals and any farmer would have their chicken coop at least maybe 200 feet I, I really think you need to address the issue here of uh, the ordinances because you have I've looked at the ordinances and I was surprised of how lack they were they there was no consideration for neighbors um, I don't look forward to this summer and I have grandchildren it's a side yard that I, I have a garden uh, I want my children to be able to walk back and forth. I don't want to bring it in the house. I've already brought in chicken feathers my feet, and I do not want to ever have flies like that in, the, in my house again. It cost over $300 for a pest control. I do pay now for rats, make sure I don't have rats, um, because they attract rats. Um, I don't know how to stress you know, how upsetting it is it's just way too close to my house and you have within three feet of the fence line well that would be within 12 feet of my house if that um, chicken coop was you know it's really actually maybe two and a half feet it's too close to the front of the street it's too close to my house I wouldn't want it near anybody's house that close uh, could I ask a question mm -hmm. do you have a parameter that you would like do you have an idea of what you'd like to see in in lieu of just an entire ban on it or is that what your preference would be um, it's a beach community I and and knowing what I know about farm animals and you can buy fresh eggs now in and the market there was a time where you couldn't you know um, 
the common sense tells me that it costs, and I've looked it up, about $42 for a dozen eggs if you raise them yourself. If you consider the cost compared to $4 in the store, I chickens only um, produce from about two years, and they live for about 10, uh, so they would be pets. Um, I have a girlfriend who's already taken in two chickens that have been abused. Um, I see just more problems than um, what they would be worth. It seems to me like a fad. Um, not enough people know the you know what's all involved with chickens. That being said, I like animals. You know, um, it would ha they would have to be the little town of what, what's the whole, out, little town outside here. There. Uh, or is 150 feet from any residence, which is extreme for a little country town. Uh, I just think it needs to be common sense when you look at the uh, ordinances. I see how concerned you are about other things and the time involved. I don't know what happened when you set up these ordinances. I think you'd be surprised if you uh, address the issue again. Um, I don't think residents were concerned. I. I don't know what kind of community you want to represent here, but to me, this is my dream cottage and uh, by the sea, the sound of the ocean. People buy little chickens, uh, the little ones, and five, two out of maybe five little chicks or roosters. I had roosters I had to dealt with this summer that took forever, and there was no, there's no health ordinances. I can't call the health department and get help with this issue. Um, the only people that you can call, the, the animal controls won't come out, uh, deal with chickens. Um, the police department is the only people that could come out. Well, thank you so much for coming forward. I appreciate it. And you can see it was a little stressful for you, but um, thank stressful. you. Thank you for coming forward at any time. And, and I would appreciate it if you, if you have some ideas, if you could forward them to me so then we could talk about them maybe at a later date. That'd be great. Thank you. Uh, Ron, I'm completely ignorant as to our chicken ordinance, and if you could maybe <coughs> prepare something for us just to say, here's what we have now. I will. That would be great. Thank you. Um, your, uh, just for your information, under 1780-080 animals, um, there's a provision for domestic fowl. Up to five domestic fowl may be kept accessory to any principal use on any lot in addition to small animals permitted in subsection 1. Um, for each thousand square feet of lot area in excess of the minimum lot area required for a zone or if there's no minimum lot area for each thousand square feet of lot area in excess of 5,000 square feet, one additional chicken may be kept and prohibits pea fowl, whatever those are. So that's what I see in our code on, on this issue. Okay. But nothing about setbacks? No, I, I have been in jurisdictions that have at least a five-foot setback for the actual chicken coop from uh, Side yards. Okay. Well, maybe just something. We I will send you about. some information okay. that claims that, plus information on the setbacks. Thanks. Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Noel Walker. Noel Walker, and um, I came because I just found out about the, the problem with the uh, deed restriction at the park, and. Uh, uh, as some of you know, I have a boat rental here in, um, in town on the lake. And um, I've been here 31 years, and I believe that the first carp festival was held about 30 years ago. And we had several of them since. We don't have them anymore, but we have something called the revival. And I think in all those cases, um, there, there were commercial uh, setups where people were selling barbecue chicken or what have you, selling books, I remember one fellow. We've done this for, I would imagine, probably every year something's happened at that park where they've gotten a permit, managed to from the city, to stage that and to have those uh, commercial ventures there. And I, now that I've heard the discussion um, from these officials, I don't want to say much else other than I just hope that you can get past this and return it to a situation where we can have those. Again, it's important. I know in the 31 years I've been here, um, I've seen a lot of people at those parks just full. We've even had buses bringing them from downtown. 
Um, and it's really important, I think, to the vitality of the lake and uh, notoriety of the lake. And I just hope that it gets back to that. And for that matter, I mean, if we say no to this, if we continue to honor this deed restriction, then what about all the times that the city took part in it? I mean, <laughs> you know, it, it doesn't seem right to, to stop it all of a sudden. That's it. Thank, Thank you. you. Appreciate it. Mr. Sexton. Good evening. I uh, just wanted to let you know I'm uh, here representing uh, Doves Lake Water Improvement District. No, yeah. we, we all know you, but if you could just state your name into for the record. Bill Sexton. Thank and you. we appreciate the opportunity to work with the city on our projects in progress. Thank you. Uh, as you know, the city employees work um, long and hard every week to make our parks accessible by the public and they're always free of trash um, in good repair etc and um, I think that um, they've done a great job in preparing their grotto grounds and their um, urban renewal projects what have you I'd like to see that continue and um, as Noel stated his 31 years here I've been here for 40 and have raised kids on the lake, my grandkids, and would love to uh, have the opportunity to, to um, keep the parks in the state that they are with all of the public being able to go to any function that is permitted by the city. And um, I appreciate your time for letting me speak. I also have a comment from a, a resident that lives three doors to the west or the east, excuse me, and uh, staying her name is Patty Sorensen. She has two comments, so make them quick. I would like to let you know I'm full support of having vendors at activities at Regatta Park. Our home is located three lots from the park and we have never had an issue with the fun noise and activity at the park. In addition, trash is never left behind there. I can't imagine what would be a reason for the change in this policy. Uh, second, our home is in this Voyager sewer project and I am very disappointed in the lack of communication from the city that the process for installation was complete. I checked two months ago and was told that the process was almost complete. As a homeowner, I have heard nothing more from the city so I assume the process was not complete. I finally called last Friday, talked with Kevin in the Public Work Department. He said all I had to do was file an application and so he mailed it to me. Why were the homeowners not notified of this? I checked with some of the neighbors and they also had received no information. Please send the homeowners involved a postcard to start this long awaited sewer hookup. Thank you for listening. That's all I have. Thank you very it. much. Appreciate it. Anyone who did not sign up who wishes to speak at this time? Um, Your Honor, yes, please. one clarification. Earlier I said I hadn't reviewed a deed until today. I did review a deed about a year ago uh, at the request of the VCB director. It's just not the same deed that I saw today. It's a different deed. So just for clarification. Thank you. And then I guess it's, uh, I don't want to open this whole can of worms, but just in my head. So I, I, I got we're not talking about denying the event, just denying the vendors. Is that correct? Okay. Again, there's two things. Okay, there's first of all the application for Mr. Schlesinger's, which dealt with our, and that was denied, dealt with our ordinances and so forth. On that one, I'm assuming Mr. Schlesinger is going to appeal that. That would come to me. I'll make a decision on it. The other part, which the later comments have been about, is the restrictions that came to us through a deed. And, uh, and uh, they restrict um, the the vendors, the types of vendors, the activities that can be done on the park. And that's the one, as I mentioned, that okay. uh, Mr. Apicello, Mr. Drystad, and I are going to be working on to see what we can do with it. Okay. Good. And, and I, I guess my comment is I assume that's about a completed permit that's already been issued. And if it doesn't say you're allowed to have vendors, then you can't have vendors. I just wanted to be clear. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Presentations, Lincoln City Reads.
You have your own name tag? That is so great. Do we have one for Ed yet? <laughs> yes. Oh, good. <laughs> we hide it, though, when it comes. <laughs> <coughs> Well, good evening. Um, I am here to tell you briefly about a new program that we're la launching at Driftwood Public Library. Um, for the past, oh gosh, almost year and a half, we have been experimenting with the idea of doing a community reads program. Um, some of you may be aware that Newport in the past has had Newport reads. Um, other municipalities have programs they call the Big Read. Philadelphia has one they call One Book, One Philadelphia. And the basic idea is that um, everybody gets together and reads the same book. Um, and, uh, you know, sometimes it's chosen for local interest or just because it seems like an interesting and relevant read. Um, so Driftwood is having our inaugural um, Lincoln City Reads program that will be launching this spring. Uh, the main event will take place during Community Week, so um, April 23rd through 29th. And we're working with the Community Week um, board to coordinate our events. Um, so tonight I am here to announce our first ever Lincoln City Reads program. We will be getting together to read the book Mr. Penumbra's 24-Hour Bookstore. Um, and this is a novel by Robin Sloan. Um, it, we chose it because we think it has a broad appeal. It's got a pretty light and positive tone, which seemed like a good choice for our first foray into this. And we feel that it's elements of fantasy, mystery, friendship, and adventure, um, as well as themes of new technology and old technology cryptic codes, secret societies, puzzles, things like that, really lend it to um, some fun library programming and also some fun community partnerships. Um, it came out in 2012, so it's been out for a few years, and we do have many copies in the library. Um, we will be this is, we will be having a kickoff celebration on Friday, March 3rd at 7 p.m., um, and that's going to involve uh, Mr. Bill's Traveling Trivia Show will be coming. We'll be doing kind of stump the librarians. We want to, we're hoping that we'll have a team of librarians and we're hoping we'll have teams from the community who will challenge us in our trivia knowledge. Um, and then we'll also have food and copies of the book available at a discount for purchase. Um, we also will be setting aside some books that can be supplied to students and other folks who maybe will not aren't able to afford the $5 uh, charge. And of course, there will be many copies in the library. Um, we're hoping to make this an annual event. And uh, as we move forward, we'll be looking for community members to join us in planning future uh, Lincoln City Reads programs. We're really excited about this. And I hope that all of you will join us in reading Mr. Penumbra's 24-hour bookstore. Uh, while I'm here, I did also want to mention that coming up on February 25th is the Library Strategic Planning Retreat, and I would love it if at least one member of the council would be uh, available to join us. That's going to be on Saturday the 25th, and it goes from 9.30 in the morning until 3.30 in the afternoon. And where? Uh, and this, that'll be here at the library. Does anyone have any questions about the Lincoln City Reads program? Just because I drifted for a moment, uh -huh. the, the event is going to be at the library. Uh, we have a, a number of different events. That, the, the, uh, the kickoff party, yes, is at the library. Okay. And then we'll be having a number of different events at the library and throughout the community during okay. uh, community days. Great. Thank you. I just want to say um, I'm really excited for your pick of your book. Mm -hmm. I love that book. Yeah, I'm really excited about it. And fun. It's just fun because there's so many different aspects of it, and I think it will lend itself to some really interesting and fun discussions, too. It's really fun. Great, Great idea. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Uh, we had a public hearing, public comment. Public hearing continued from January 23rd, 2017. Applicants submitted a request to withdraw. Beach Club Event Center, Michael Alla Bradley, change of nonconforming use. We have before us a... Uh, uh, request to hereby withdraw our application for a change of nonconforming use for the property. Um, 
do I need to do anything in particular on this? Well, uh, Your Honor, because this was a call up by the council, I would think it would be appropriate for the council to acknowledge the, the application's withdrawal and, you know, terminate the appeal. How? Oh. Uh, just by motion to uh, accept the withdrawal. Okay. I move to accept the withdrawal of Michael and Lila Bradley. Um, second. Their, of their application for a non-conforming use. For the property at 2020. Okay. Yes, for the property at 2020 Northeast, 22nd, Lincoln City. Okay. I second it. Motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Thank you. Okay, ordinances. Ordinance number 2017-01, second reading. Mr. Apicello. Council, I'll do the reading and then there's a couple of things I'll have to read. Uh, this is the second reading of an ordinance amending the Lincoln City Municipal Code, Title IV, Real Property, adding a new Chapter 405, Grant of Temporary Easements and Licenses, delegating to the City Manager the authority to grant temporary easements and licenses subject to land use permitting. Again, this is Ordinance 2017-01. Uh, in the Council communication, I uh, kind of tracked along with the discussion from the last meeting and suggested a few changes. I'll read them. Uh, if you want to add them, then you would simply incorporate them in your motion. In the paragraph with the language that was added at the first reading, um, paragraph 7, it, the added language last time said, notwithstanding the above limitations, a temporary license may automatically renew without a new application, such as a revocable license authorizing an encroachment, provided all payments are made as required. I added the word annual payments to clarify a question that came up. Um, in section 405060, there was a question um, by the, the council about the time, timing of the reports. I talked to the city manager. He was okay with the quarterly reporting. So if you accept that change, 405060 report would read, the city manager shall provide a quarterly report to the city council on the easements and licenses granted pursuant to this chapter. Again, that would change from the biannual report that was previously there. Uh, also, uh, responding to the questions about the enforcement during the operation of a easement or a license, um, I have some suggested language. In 405-040, determination by the city manager would read as follows. A, if the city manager is satisfied after consideration of the evaluation criteria and factors in the best interests of the public at, that the requested temporary easement or license furthers the public interest, the city manager may grant such easement or license or portion thereof in a form approved by the city attorney. The city manager may impose reasonable conditions as part of such grant of easement or license in furtherance of the public interest. The violation of license or easement terms and conditions shall subject the instrument to revocation and shall also be an offense against the city punishable as a Class B violation in accordance with LCMC Chapter 116. That would give violation of the terms and conditions some teeth. Um, another concern that was raised um, had to do with the time frame for the city manager to act. And unlike the other language that's added, staff doesn't actually recommend this language, and I've actually uh, modified it slightly from what's in your, in your communication. But um, if you want to impose some time limits on the city manager other than completing the review in a reasonable period of time, you could add language that says, if the city manager fails to act to approve or deny within 30 days of submission of a complete application, the matter shall, you should say, shall be referred to the city council for decision and scheduled for a public hearing the next available for public hearing at the next available city council meeting so it will be shall be referred to the city council for decision and scheduled for the next of, for public hearing at the next available city council meeting so if you're not delegating to the manager to avoid having to have individual public hearings and he doesn't act you would have to have a public hearing so now we don't again recommend that uh, we would just recommend leaving the language that it is now that essentially the manager would act within a reasonable period of time could I ask who we is you said we don't recommend uh, I think the city manager and I agree okay that I we don't 
no. want to impose a time limit or have it bumped up to you if he doesn't act within 30 right. days. I think he's committed to doing it in a reasonable period of time. Okay. Great. Um, there was a question about the appeal fee. It's actually provided for in the code, and I put it down there. It's already $150 as set forth in the, that um, existing ordinance. And then uh, there was some concern about the use of the word sign off, and so the language was modified uh, in response to that. The manager shall require review and recommendation. Instead of the word sign off, it would say by the Lincoln City Planning Department, the Lincoln City Public Works Department, and approval as to form by the city attorney before any easement or license can be issued. So with that, um, those would be the only changes. Uh, again, we staff recommends uh, these changes except for the one about the uh, referral to you if he fails to act within 30 days. So with that, I'd ask for approval of second reading with the changes as recommended and adoption of the ordinance. I move to approve second reading with the recommended changes, not including the 30-day um, limitation. I'll second that. <laughs> we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I just have a quick question. When you say 30 days, is it to be assumed that it's calendar days? You know, I hate to miss speak on this. Our, our code generally in the beginning of the code says whether or not the word days means calendar or uh, so I don't uh, Oh, but it, it, it's, it states it, it somewhere. Okay. Yes, it, it should. And if it doesn't, then I'll come back to you and make sure we say that. But again, we're not recommending that section. Any further discussion? Okay, we have a roll call. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. Hinton? Yes. Casper? Yes. Walkie? Yes. Ward? Yes. And Williams? Yes. Motion carries. Ordinance 2017-02, first reading. <coughs> Uh, this is first reading of Ordinance 2017-02. Um, Sorry, no, it's not. Um, ordinance 2017-02, an ordinance amending the Lincoln City Municipal Code LCMC Title III Revenue and Finance, adding alternative administrative provisions to acknowledge that the additional city penalty and interest provisions will not be imposed when collection is administered by the Oregon Department of Revenue. Um, Council, this is essentially, we did our ordinance uh, for the marijuana 3% tax pretty early. And after we did our ordinance, uh, the, the Oregon Department of Revenue sent some language to the League of Oregon Cities, which got incorporated into a publication of theirs, but did not get incorporated into their uh, Microsoft Word version of their model ordinance on the website. So uh, we missed it. Uh, I missed it. I, if I guess I had looked everywhere on their website, I might have found it. Um, so after we executed the DOR agreement, um, they brought to our attention that we didn't have language which they felt was important. They don't want to administer our penalties. Our penalties are uh, somewhat incremental. Uh, there's an interest, uh, a penalty each time you miss. You would, like a, after 30 days, there's a penalty, and then there's, uh, well, actually, the first time you miss, there's a 10% penalty, and the second time you miss, or, or when you get 30 days out, there's another penalty imposed. Uh, the DOR's setup is different. They don't want to learn every city's uh, administrative penalty program, so they basically wanted us to say that if uh, they administered our ordinance, our collection, we would simply use their established penalty procedure. So uh, the ordinance that we adopted actually provided for alternative enforcement, and I put that in the recitations um, because I think we could argue we don't actually need to amend the ordinance to do this, uh, to have them administer the penalties. But they requested um, that we give them an assurance we're not looking to them 
to impose our penalties. So that's the reason for this ordinance. So I'd ask for approval of first reading, and if it's unanimous, we can proceed to second reading. Motion. Move for approval of first reading of ordinance 2017-02. Second. Motion to second. Discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Walkie? Yes. Ward? Yes. Williams? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. Hinton? Yes. And Casper? Yes. Motion carries. Council, this would be, uh, if you're ready, uh, second reading of Ordinance 2017-02. Um, this is second reading an ordinance amending the Lincoln City Municipal Code LCMC Title III Revenue and Finance, adding alternative administrative provisions to acknowledge that additional city penalty and interest provisions will not be imposed when collection is administered by the Oregon Department of Revenue. Ask for approval of second reading and adoption of the ordinance. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call please. Ward? Yes. Williams? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. Hinton? Yes. Casper? Yes. And Walkie? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Resolutions none. Special order business. Contract change order. Schooner Creek Bridge sewer boring change order. So I'm going to give a little bit of background and then Lila's going to explain further um, what our options are. Um, last council meeting, ODOT came to you, uh, Jerry Wilcott from ODOT, explaining that they're going to be doing some work on the Schooner Creek Bridge at the end of this year. That bridge, um, as a result of that work, the Cathodic Protection work, they will need to replace our sewer line, which is attached to the bridge on the west side. So we've got, we've got two options. Um, we could temporarily relocate the sewer line during construction, do bypass pumping, put the sewer line back. Um, that is going to be pretty difficult and conservatively uh, we think it's going to be around $650,000. So another option, or the, the desired option, is um, to remove the line from the bridge permanently. And we happen to have um, our water line boring contractor on site boring a water line. So we um, asked the contractor um, if they would be uh, willing to uh, give us a price to boring a sewer line um, using the same mobilization and the same method and um, they did give us a price and they were uh, the price they gave us is four hundred and thirty two thousand two hundred ninety two thousand dollars and eighty two cents so um, currently um, they're in a position to do that second bore um, if we had to come back at a later date and do another boring project for the sewer exclusively we would have to design it outside of that current alignment. You know, right now the contractor knows where the water line is. He's willing to take the risk to put the sewer line uh, 10 feet away, but stay within our easement. So if we went back out and designed this thing, um, we'd need private easements. We'd have another easement from DSL, and it 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 could be it could be schedule-wise impossible to do before um, ODOT needs us to move the line. So we're recommending that we um, that we do a change order to the existing contract um, to include the sewer bore for the amount quoted by the contractor. Before I get into the authority um, that would allow us to do this project as a, a change order, do you have any questions? Yes, I do. Anybody else? Yeah. Uh, so we were moving. We are moving the water line under. We moved it because of what reason? Um, we moved. Well, we needed to expand the size of the system, the water system. Okay. And so we're putting. Um, 
it's an outside diameter of 20 inches, but the inside diameter is 16, and that's what we have going south um, all the way to the water plant. And so, okay. so it's a, a fill line for our reservoirs. We needed to expand the size of that line, and we needed to replace the line because it was it was deteriorated as well. The old steel line These, was having okay. problems, and we were worried about it breaking and essentially washing the road away. Was it on the was it on of, the bridge? It was well. This part was south of the bridge, and so we wanted to um, get our line off of the bridge for safety reasons, and so we went. Um, we did the undergrounding. Would this sewer undergrounding have occurred had ODOT not done the cathodic process? Um, it would have. It would have happened probably at a later time, and we have that in our <coughs> SDC system development update. As a so it is a pro it is a project. <coughs> it's listed in there as a project. Stephanie, you said that. Um, if we couldn't get the things needed signed off in time for this project to be occurred. How can we go forward at all without the necessary easements done? What you're saying, what we would need to do to do it later, we couldn't do in time for this, but we can do it now. So because we're going to stay in the same easement that we have for the water line and the same mobilization, the same setup. So, yeah, so they'll. They'll keep the same pit, essentially, a little bit larger, but they'll be able to bore that line right next to the water line in the existing easement, that the, the two easements that we have, one from a private property, one from DSL. And easements have a length of time? Is that what, <clears throat> I, don't, I don't understand how you can do it now, but you couldn't do it later. Well, because right now, um, if we, so if we came back later and did the sewer, without as a separate project we would have to get another easement we couldn't do it in the same easements that we have it would physically have to be moved further to the west I don't understand. yeah that's because the the contractor knows where the line is that he's putting in right now and so when you're doing a boring project it can be unknown and so as far as risk is concerned they would need probably a separate easement would he know it? He knows it now, and he would know but, it. Yeah. But it could be a different contract. Could right. Well, it's exposed now, and he's got his pit exposed, so he's not. You know, he's. The pit is where I don't know where the is. where the water where the bore goes in to the ground. So he's he's boring right now. He knows exactly where that line is. So the starting process. The is starting and the ending right. points. Yeah. I have a question. Please. Um, so you said that, did you say that this contractor would assume the risk if he does it now? Correct. Yeah, he, he will assume the risk of putting the sewer line in the same easement and within that 15-foot easement. That's a big deal. That is, yeah, that, that's, that's why it may, that's why it really, this is the only circumstance where we could get this price, you know, situation where we could get this price and get this sewer so close to the wa where our water line easement, or within the water the water line easement. May I ask another yeah. question, oh, um, which is um, this is a little off, but would would the contractor be um, available, and could we maybe have a tour? It's boring. I've been around him before, but they're really interested. So, for those who would want to see how this works, would that be right. something mm -hmm. certainly that any of us could do if they wanted to? It's interesting. It's we do have on the Lincoln City website. We have pictures as well of them as the project's gone along. That would be happy to, to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm going to just interrupt because both of you are going very soft all of a sudden, and it's hard to hear you. So make sure you speak <laughs> up, Mr. Gord or Anderson. I'm sorry, Tiffany. What and Lila? What I hear you saying is we don't have a choice. We got to get the sewer line off the bridge so ODOT can do their thing on the bridge. To move it off the bridge and have it still functioning, it's going to cost us roughly six hundred fifty thousand dollars. Six hundred fifty thousand dollars. 
to, to more, get it off, more than that. take care of it, and then put it back on. Or an option would be to, right now, spend 432000 and bore it under the creek. I, you know, it's nice about all the other things, but, you know, the point is, you know, we've, we've got to do something with the sewer line. And do you want to spend more money and put it back on the bridge, or do you want to spend less money and have it go under the creek? Right, and, you know, we brought this up before, and I had no problem at all. My only concern was the authority to do it, and I think you're going to address that. Because right. it just kind of came out of nowhere, oh, by the way, you're going to do this. And, yeah. and the um, one of the other things with this project, the bypass pumping that would have to happen as, um, you know, it's loud, and it would go on for a really long time. We'd have a pipe above ground, or, you know, we're not even sure where you could attach it to the bridge to... Right. To pump it. So Valuable. that's another it's, difficulty. It's a good good use of the money. Okay, so um, on to the authority. Um, unless exempted from competitive bidding, a public improvement contract is competitively bid. Um, Lincoln City Municipal Code LCMC um, 205080 exemptions list several exemptions from um, competitive bidding. And LCMC 205080 um, paragraph L exempts the following classes of public contracts. Um, they're exempt from competitive procurement. Um, so any other contract in which the local contract review board makes a determination that the public interest would be promoted by exempting the contract from the competitive, competitive bidding process, um, provided the exemption is adopted pursuant to the public contracting code and these rules, Ordinance 2014-19-3, Ordinance 2013-15-5, and Ordinance uh, 2005-04-1. So staff is recommending that the Local Contract Review Board um, find and determine that the public interest would be promoted by exempting this contract from competitive bidding. Pertinent facts to support this finding include the fact the contractor is on site performing substantially similar work, saving mobilization costs, and the change order amendment really only changes the quantity of work being performed as opposed to the type of work. And that is the work is re reasonably related to the boring contract in place now. Council may approve the change order um, amount of $432,292 and 82 cents, approximately a 28% increase over the existing contract under this exemption. Mr. Mayor, I think that our attorney would like to add a little bit more to this. Yeah. Um, if you approved uh, this change order in the amount of uh, $394,165, it would fall under a different exemption in your code, subsection B, which has is a flat 25% change order can be approved, um, but you're thirty-five thousand dollars, thirty-seven thousand dollars short. Um, so, staff looked at the other exemption under L, which would be that the finding the public interest would be promoted, and that it's based upon an exemption under the public contracting law. The public contracting law, and it's one thirty-seven zero four nine zero nine ten, has the reasonably related change order exemption language, but doesn't have the twenty-five percent cap. So you can basically use that to reference the state exemption, which doesn't have the 25% limit. In addition to that, uh, Councilor Anderson kind of waved a red flag of emergency. Okay, so in your code, you have an, an exemption for emergency. It's under 205080A, emergency contracts. Now, um, when I originally you know, help staff write this. I wasn't really quite aware of the permitting and easement constraints that they were operating under uh, between now and when um, this ODOT work is going to occur. And Stephanie has basically stated it's going to be really difficult to obtain another easement, possibly in a different location, and, and get the permitting for that. So uh, this exemption you couldn't approve this exemption tonight because you have to have a report by your city manager which summarizes the basis for the exemption. But I'd like to request that in addition to granting this under the exemption staff has written here, subsection L, I'd like to ask that the manager can prepare 
take a look at the exemption for emergency, and if he can justify it based upon the facts that Stephanie and, and Lila have set forth, then he would give you a report to that effect, and at the time they come back to you for the budget transfer, um, also approve uh, exemption under the emergency provision. The reason for that is that uh, rather than have one uh, one part of our ordinance, it actually gives us two reasons to justify doing this, to making this kind of a change order. As I said, I'm, I'm in favor of it. I think it's going to serve the city well. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with how we proceed. And I am. Uh, with what uh, Mr. Avicello described, okay. I'm comfortable with that. Okay. Me? Please. Um, I just want to ask about the experience of our of the contractor that we have hired and has done this first um, boring I know we had a previous contractor that we had problems with can you describe the work with this current contractor um, the current contractor is almost complete with the waterline boring section yeah. and so they've they've done an excellent job expediently thank you thank you <coughs> and I didn't see in the um, <coughs> council communication that this was routed to the city attorney that had a red flag for me. Um, I now I'm glad I've got his input. Okay. Is that correct? That is correct. Yes. Reason? He, he wrote this section okay. on authority. Okay. So we're concerned those make sure everyone's in the loop. Existence. Right. Yeah. Is that it? Mr. Hogan. Um, would this new pipeline help prevent the discharge in Nelscott? Could it increase capacity to the wastewater treatment? It will increase a little bit of capacity, but as we talked about in the workshop, the um, other part of it is going to be the line going under the creek, and this would connect to those new lines. And this, this pump line. Um, so, so the particular line from Cutler City would connect into one of the new lines that goes under Schooner Creek, and that's going to help alleviate our, our overflows. Okay. Um, so it will be an increased capacity or it will be the same capacity? It's going to be an 8-inch line, So, and we'll put some um, larger impellers in the um, pump station, but it's not. it doesn't really increase a lot of capacity. Is there I mean, any? it's larger, but... Is there a need to have a larger capacity? Is there a reason why we were not? Um, we really treated? can't do it because it's a force main line. So we're changing this line from a gravity line that's on the bridge. The line that goes under the creek will be part of the force main. We'll continue the force main. So it actually goes back um, two to 300 feet um, south of the bridge to connect into the force main line. And then the whole thing will be a force main until it gets to about 51st Street. Oh, cool. Uh, and then w uh, the easement that is that they are that the contractor has for where he's at, is that going to be extended, or is this the 432,000 or 394, whichever number we pick, is that does it include a new easement, or is that? Um, it'll be in the same easement. We have we have an upper room there for the water line and the sewer line in that easement. And that includes him the staging. Yes, this is a full price without contingency. Cool. That good. Yeah, that's great. Thank you, Mr. Ward. So I got some mixed messages. Um, is this going to help the uh, overflow problem in Nell Scott? Is it going to fix it or help it a little? It, it might help a little bit, but it's really when we put that new line under Schooner Creek, that's what's going to alleviate it. And so where this line, it's actually the 48th and Jetty Pump Station line. So this force main, um, goes or the sewer goes to 48th and jetty pump station and then 48th and jetty um, goes to the 24 inch line under the creek how long do you anticipate it will be before we stop this building in no scott i i believe it's going to be when we um put this new line under schooner creek so uh, the parallel line can and you give me a rough date have we 
being from that area, we really hear a lot about it. From the, the, the reason that the reason that's not before you tonight, because if you recall, initially we tried to talk about doing these together. That one cannot be a change order. It does not fit the criteria, so we have to do that one as a separate bidding process, and that's the process we're working now. It's not something we're going to wait until next budget season to begin. Uh, we'll be bringing back with that one also the ability to amend the budget so that you can go forward with it. But I don't have a date right now as to when that RFP will be ready to go. Do we have so any idea? Within, a, within a, a month or so. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're looking on it. And, and then that uses our um, SDC system development charge um, improvement because that will be adding capacity. Okay. And so um, really we'll be able to use that funding and and we'll have to do a competitive bid. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't even know where we're at in this discussion. Oh, okay, we're on the budget. All right, thank you. So the um, funding source is the capital replacement fund, um, 252 additional capital reserve in the amount of the 432, 292, 82. We will be postponing one small pump station upgrade to cover this project. And um, and then if we need a budget transfer resolution, we'll bring that to you at the next meeting. Which uh, which pump upgrade? It's the pier point. It's a small pump station. And we had an estimate of about 300,000. We're still working on the, the plans for that. So it's no threat of it failing. No, no. I double checked that with our, our team. And so our recommendation is to initiate a change order in the amount of 432.292 and 82 cents, amending the Schooner Creek waterline crossing at Highway 101 um, contract with KE Excavating Inc. and um, approve the request exemption from competitive bidding under LCMC 205080L. And if and return with a report uh, if we can justify the emergency at the time we do the resolution. So moved. Second. Motion to second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call, please. Walkie? Yes. Ward? Yes. Williams? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? Yes. Hampton? Yes. Casper? Yes. Motion carried. Great. Thank you, Mayor. Thank Council. you both for. Uh, bringing this forward and, and taking care of this it's, yeah, it's very good thank you mr mayor yes i wonder while we're, we're hot on the uh, subject of wastewater and sewer um and before we get to the next item i guess i was um I, i'm surprised at some of the uh, headlines in our news and facebook's and electronic media regarding the latest uh, discharge uh, thank you, City Manager, for sending out the uh, press release. And I, I know we don't control headlines and stories with the press. Is there a difference between, quote, a spill and a discharge? Um, and before you answer that, I, I like to think, or I've learned from you, that in heavy rain, we, we have a an unusual amount of uh, inflow uh, into our system of rainwater. And rather than have it back up into the basements and toilets and stuff of our citizens, we choose to discharge, turn a valve and have it go somewhere else and not to the system. A spill to me, is that's a discharge to me, a spill being a leak, a broken pipe, you know, something, a malfunction. Is there, so where I'm getting at is, you know, I'm a little tired and maybe our, our press releases have to help the uh, press understand that we chose that over something worse rather than, you know, we leaking problem or a spill problem yes. and we're ignoring, because we're not ignoring the, the problem at all. You're, you're correct on that. Um, what you've described, you're correct. Uh, if we, so the press release dealt with us turning a valve and sending the water down so that, or the, uh, the sewage down so it ultimately goes out to the ocean. If we had not done that, then what you would have is a backup, and it would be coming out wherever it finds a way to come out, which 
could be coming out manholes, could be coming out in somebody's home, uh, wherever it might be that it finds its way. So to prevent that, we will open that valve when we have an overabundance of water getting into our system. And so the other part that I should point out is that what is being discharged is a combination of rainwater and sewage. So I think, excuse me, again, I, I was just really disappointed um, with the way the press handled this. And I am, not that I'm a, you know, a Facebook or anything else, but even our own Devil's Lake Water District on the lake, you know, took shots at the city. Um, so I, I think uh, to our benefit, you know, the more we can educate the public and news media and, you know, even the amateur news media is between the two, we'll be better off because we're all very sensitive uh, to where that waste goes and when it unfortunately gets discharged where it shouldn't be going. Thank you. Sorry, Mayor. But yeah, um, how are we allowed to do that, and how many times, and at what capacity, and at how, without any kind of negative consequences? Well, um, DEQ calls calls us, and I mean, we we do the report, the sanitary sewer overflow report. We call in, we get a number, um, you know, that we'd had an event happen, and so. Um, we sit down with them and, and talk with them afterwards and let them know what we're working on and how we're working on it. And they can choose to fine you. So we have an unlimited, if, it's, if, it, if it meets a certain criteria, right. according to DEQ. It, yes, and when it, when it happens, unless we have, you know, a small break or something it's that, that we control, then it's reported and it's always been during these large storm events because the ground saturation, the ground's full and then the rain just keeps coming and so it's those four inch rain events that really affect us and, and every other city. Okay. Mr. Ward. So DEQ, has, have they ever threatened to fine us? No. Just I mean it's a possibility if you, if you you know, don't have a a good explanation. Right. Certainly can. I mean, I, it, to and, me, and it's whether you're working on your system to uh, alleviate those things. And so, we do um, an infiltration I and I report to them every year, letting them know, you know, how many lines we've TV'd, how many repairs we have made, in the collection system. And so we're working diligently on that inflow. Well, yeah, as as uh, Councillor Anderson rightfully pointed out, you know, it's a lesser of two evils, um, but it's still evil. Uh, you know, any any process that we have that's, you know, it, it, it ends up with seven million gallons of, if that's right, uh, no, three I million gallons. What was that? It, count? Was, it was two million gallons. Okay. The previous storm. This time it was uh, thirty-four thousand gallons. Okay. I mean, any time that ends up on the beach, it's it's a bad, bad thing. Uh, Councilor Walking. My thought when I read the press release was this was a sewage spill, but it was because of heavy rainfall, therefore it was very diluted. So it was it, a it diluted sewage spill. It's but it not raw sewage. Right. It's not still just sewage, sewage, but yeah. usually when it spills, it's you know, the water that rises to the top, but yeah. okay. thank you very much. We'll work on those press releases. Okay. Thanks. And did we have a motion on this? Yeah. Oh, we're done with that. We're, we're all finished. Thank you. I'm sorry. We were waiting on Chief Gillian to come forward to discuss uh, something about purchase of police vehicles. Thank you. Good evening. So before you is a proposal. Chief, do you have a badge or a not badge? <laughs> I do right here. Prove it. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Just so everyone at home will know who he is. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, before you is a uh, proposal for uh, two uh, to fund two police cars. This was um, earmarked in the uh, current budget. And we're proposing the purchase of um, 
rather than marked police cars this time. Um, one detective car to replace a vehicle that's got 160,000 miles on it. And then um, the other one is would be an addition to the fleet rather than a replacement. This would be uh, the lieutenant administrative vehicle. The lieutenant lost his car about three years ago. It was one of the old um, Crown Victorias. Uh, he's driving one of the detective cars right now. We're hoping to get that other detective online here pretty quick, so he's going to need that car back. So we're um, short a car for him. I don't know. I mean, we had budgeted uh, eighty-five thousand six hundred dollars. Um, the uh, administrative explorer um, and the the uh, detective vehicle with the installs um, comes up to a little over seventy-one thousand dollars. So I'm still fourteen thousand four hundred and sixty-two dollars under budget. May I point out one thing? Please. Um, I have been approached by uh, um, one of you regarding uses of uh, police uh, vehicles uh, that are been taken out of service. Um, normally we would be doing the trade-in immediately with that. Helen will put a little bit on hold with it. We put it out on an auction. We don't trade it in to the, to the company. And I'll come back with a further discussion on that. So just so you know, it's we, we won't put this vehicle immediately out to auction. Okay. And thus I didn't really capture it into that bottom line. I didn't count it as a revenue. I just kind of left it as is. Okay, just, just so I'm clear, the motion is for the 71100 or just we just need to approve the purchase at your discretion? Well, just we, approving the purchase, yes. Approving the purchase as described, okay. Mr. Mayor? Um, yes, please. I have a question. Um, does that include the cost for the lights and other equipment? Yes, it does. Under the... Um, the uh, third line is the conversion build installation of $5,700, and that's for light siren radios for both vehicles. Thank you. Mayor, I'd move for approval of the two vehicles requested by um, Chief Killian. I'd second that. Motion and a second. Any discussion? I do. <coughs> um, you say that the first vehicle is the interceptor. Is for the lieutenant, right? So that would be an unmarked car. Correct. To replace the one with. No, no. No. That would be an addition to the fleet. Okay. I don't see the. Can you explain why you need a 4x4 four four truck as a police vehicle? Okay, that's for the detective. Right, I, I, I missed. Okay, okay. I just want to Sorry. make sure that we yes. are on the same line. Correct. Stuff. So, um, for undercover purposes, you really don't want a look-alike police car. Okay, even though, like the Ford Explorer, if it's marked like our current cars are or unmarked, it still looks kind of like a police car. This, the intent with this is not to look like a police car because um, it's also um, used for. Um, investigations. I don't know how much more you really want me to get into that in a public setting. No idea. I'm just asking you. Right, right, yeah. So it's used for surveillances and that type of stuff, so we don't want it to stand out. And it still has the better of the truck to store the necessary equipment. Good. Sure. Did you have something? It's a Ford 150. There's a lot of them on the road. Yes. Yeah. Kind of blends in. I got a three quarter ton. There's a huge <laughs> dent down the side. <laughs> the one that we towed off the. Yeah, <laughs> yeah no. But it's, great for it's great for surveillance. You just park it and you're not going anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> Any further discussion? Roll call. Williams? Yes. Anderson? Yes. Hoagland? No. Hinton? Yes. Casper? Yes. Walkie? Yes. And Ward? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay, uh, we have one change. I guess I need a motion to change. Uh, we've been asked to uh, withdraw the discussion uh, point under city manager attorney reports. Excuse me. Um, ordinance prohibiting the feeding of wildlife. Do I need a motion to remove that? Do I have to do that? Yeah, I need a motion to remove that. I can make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion carries. Uh, counselors as evaluators for requests for proposals for a new police building. Yes, Mr. Mayor and counselors. Um, uh, the, we are just about completed with putting the RFP together for the architect. We're also working on the construction manager of that. Um, as the staff has discussed this project, uh, we have felt that it would be very good to have one or two of you to participate in the evaluation of both the architect or of the architect, the construction manager, and the owner's representative to take us up through uh, the awarding of the, of the bid. Uh, there will be some time that will be dedicated to this, probably about 30 hours for the, uh, the going through all of the interviews, reviewing the applications, and so forth. So if there is one or two of you who would like to volunteer and be on that, we would greatly appreciate it. Yeah, I would throw my name in. I would too. I would too. So now you got three. Okay. Anyone else? I didn't want to exclude anyone. If you do one more, we create a quorum. So, well, an alternate. Okay. That was wonderful. Okay. Um, so, Mr. Chandler, anything? Yeah, I just got a couple of other things to mention. Um, I wasn't sure if Mayor uh, Williams and Councilor Hinton, you're on this email list yet, but the OCZMA Legislative Committee is having a committee call on February 22nd. And I'm not sure if you're on their list yet. I believe you are, but I'll set, give you this uh, document. Thank you. Um, very excited and very pleased to announce something that we're making available to our community and that is a free life, lifeguard class, okay? Uh, uh, we're offering that on, Feb it's over two weekends, February 24th, that's a Friday evening, 25th and 26th, and then the next week of March 4th and 5th, and we will be offering these lifeguard classes free. Um, they will become Red Cross certified lifeguards. It's a savings of about $100. Um, uh, and uh, so we are we are doing this to, for a couple of reasons. One is to promote uh, swimming. One is to promote a lot of fun. The other is to get potential applicants to be lifeguards. And so normally we charge about $100 for this class, but uh, for these two weekends we'll be offering it for free. Did we receive a grant for this? Nope, it's just we're waiving, we're just not going to charge the fee so that, uh, like I said, the, the biggest reason is that we need to increase our potential lifeguard pool uh, or group and uh, we get a few people that will come in and take these classes. We're hoping for a lot of people that will take it so that uh, they can become potential lifeguards for the city. Then my next question is how will this be promoted? How will people know besides tonight? Um, Gail, will you come up and tell, tell everybody how you're promoting this? I heard about it at chamber lunch. Yeah. <laughs> what, what day is that already again? 224, 25, 26, 34, 35. Yeah, it's over two weekends. Um, we've distributed flyers uh, throughout town, including um, the high school, the community college, the library, the VCB, the chamber. Um, of course, the community center, we have them up. It's on our Facebook page. Um, I, Announced it at Chamber. Um, I think Mr. Chandler announced it at Rotary. I hope he did. Um, also, you know, mm -hmm. traditional media. <laughs> we have uh, radio ads and, and print ads going out as well. Any response? Uh, we have three signed up so far, so there's still room. Uh, we'll take 10 or 12 participants. Any um, age restriction? You have to be at least 15 years old, and you have to pass a pre-qualifying swim test, which includes a 300-meter swim, six laps up and back, and uh, be able to go to the bottom of the pool and retrieve a brick. Um, it doesn't have to be pretty, but you have to at least attempt it, and then we'll teach you from there. So we wouldn't be precluding seniors who are fit and can swim properly? Anyone can do it. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Can do it. Thank Great. you. Thank you. 
I might add on that for uh, we are always looking for lifeguards. Uh, we have a good, we have a good solid group, but we need to expand that. And so, uh, uh, if you know of people who would be interested in a very fun part time job, uh, we're hiring. So the completion of this would qualify them for that position. Yes, it would. And I'd like to add um, to Mr. Chandler's comment that we're also very flexible. Um, the community center is open 102 hours a week, and so we have a lot of hours to fill on the aquatic side, and my aquatic supervisor and lead are very good at um, taking a, an employee's schedule and then matching it to our schedule. Um, we have a lot of teenagers who work who are involved in extracurricular activities, and we plug them into the pool schedule where they're able to, and it works out real well. So then the class is restricted to 15-year-olds up. What about the hiring? 15 and up. Oh, we, can mm -hmm. we can start them at 15, yes. We do have to follow state laws for 15-year-olds. Uh, what a great opportunity. Employment. But yes, it's, it's a great first job. And our goal is to, um, if I may, is to not only have them be good lifeguards, but to learn about being a good employee, you know, the responsibility involved, um, the respect for customers, customer service, um, and teamwork. So there's a lot more than just sitting on the lifeguard stand and guarding children and adults, but of course that's the most important part of the job. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks. Anything else, Ron? No, sir. Mr. Abatello? Uh The HR uh, director has been telling me that my evaluation is coming due. Um, my anniversary date is in February. Um, the last time I, I received an evaluation, it was I got the written version in July, so I think you guys did it sometime in June. Um, now, she's also asked me if I would consider using her form, uh, which frankly, I haven't looked at yet. Um, but I'm wondering if you want to schedule it. Um, also, the, the city manager, uh, his anniversary date was in January, and I don't want to jump ahead of him if he wants to go first. But uh, So I'm just bringing it up because I, I, it's timely that now you have, obviously, three new counselors who haven't had that much time to uh, take into account uh, what I do. <laughs> so uh, it may be difficult to do it. Uh, in February. So um, just throwing it out there, would you like to schedule something March 13th or would you want to put it off? Um, and also, do you want to use the established form or do you, would you like to take a look at the form that the HR director has, <coughs> which I haven't looked at yet. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Yeah, please. Is there, a, is there a time limit or does your evaluation need to occur before a certain date as there would be a negative consequences to not? Um, I don't think so. I think the, what's tr the HR director is trying to get everybody back on an annual review based on their anniversary date. Um, again, it, I, we were several months past my anniversary date. It was in the summer when we did the evaluation last year. Um, so if, if you want to delay it and then try to catch up after, um, again, I, eventually I, she'd like to get it on the same anniversary sometime in February, but um, I, there's no negative consequence that I'm aware of. And Ron has the same issue, but I'm not going to speak for Ron. He has an evaluation that's due. So. I've just turned it over to our HR director and said go. So whatever she is providing, I'm fine with. <coughs> okay, yeah, because I suppose I should have kept that in my calendar, but it would be helpful to have a prompting. I believe she's already sent you uh, uh, email that had uh, my form and the from last year's as well. Yeah. Uh, we, it just arrived this afternoon. Oh, okay. Uh, I have a chance to come But I would like to um, schedule Mr. Chandler's and get that done and then do Mr. Epstable's. For me? I, if I may, I have a suggestion. Is there, any, is there any way that we could move your um, anniversary date out like a month or two? I mean, not not the okay, it not matter. the anniversary date, but the evaluation <laughs> yeah. date. I, I think you can set okay. the evaluation. I, I think if we agree, the evaluation date can be moved to whatever date you feel is agreeable. Well, I think now that you know Colleen has has got her feet under her, and, and I, I think we could probably have prompts earlier in the year. So we're you know, hey, it's 30 days until this is due. Let's start picking a date, and I think we can get ahead of these with some guidance. 
you want to? Uh, but we still need to discuss. Uh, uh, for me, I'd like to see both forms. I, I'm not recalling what we looked at, so I would. I would I'll 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 take a look at her form and I'll send you the form from last year, and then uh, we can discuss which form you want. Because I do a self evaluation. That's what starts it. So uh, I'm going to need to know which form you want me to use. So I'll I'll get that to you, and then you can talk to me at a later date. So for Mr. Chandler, do we have a date? I don't have my book with me. Did he, did he complete the self-evaluation? Mr. Chandler doesn't do one. He's he's just, Mr. Apicello chooses to do one, but he's not required to. So I guess I'm asking for a date. Uh, Mr. Chandler's. I don't have a calendar. Is, is there a rubric that we have to grade against? Is there a way in which the, a universal rating? There's, I, I mean, if you're talking about my either, either okay. position, the council approved the evaluation form that they use for me. Um, the HR director's form may have been approved for all employees. I'm not quite sure, um, and I'm not. I can't speak to Mr. Chandler's evaluation form because I was. I don't participate. I, I don't. I've never seen it. Um, but there is kind of a standard uh, procedure for you to follow. Um, and I guess if if you read the council proof form in my case and you don't like it and you want to debate it, then um, you can assign one or two of you to to make some changes, or you can bring it back and debate it in full. Yeah, it, it's pretty self-explanatory once yeah. you get into the discussion. Yeah, you'll, you'll be comfortable with that. Yeah. And I'd just like to say I'd like to see the other one as well. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. Um, but did we choose a date? I'm looking March, uh, but we can, do you want to do it in an executive, obviously? Uh, we got the 13th and the 27th. Let's schedule for the 13th. Is there anything else scheduled for that time in executive? Not at this time. Okay. So I just need to probably need about six agreement. hours to get through mine. <laughs> are, are we talking scheduling Mr. Chandler now? Yes, or? first, yeah. Uh, yeah, and then we'll shoot for probably, gosh, I hate to say April, April 10th. Oh. So we can cram it in on the 27th, but we'll shoot for that and then we'll go from there. Uh, and then just a general agreement, head nods, everyone? Work for you? Okay, good. Okay. Very good. Uh, Mr. Hong, a quick question. I just uh, sensitive to your schedule. That's going to be like at 4 o'clock. Yeah, they. Yeah, yes, I can okay. do that. All right. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, I'm just completely opened up like 100 different programs here. Uh, and that was it for you, Mr. Abicello? Thank you. Um, yeah. Additional comments from citizens present on non agenda items. I have nothing signed up, but go on forward. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Jay Roloff, 1142 Northeast Lakewood. Um, about a month ago, I gave a summary report for you for December on the Lincoln City Warming Shelter, and it's a topic that is. I think active. So I wanted to give you a January picture. I just attended a warming shelter board meeting this afternoon, so the information I'm going to give to you is about as up to date as I can. I'm going to give you January information, it's comparative, a year to year, and then I'm going to give you a year to date set of statistics and I'll be careful to not mix them up. Uh, if you look at what happened in January of last year, January of 2016, uh, the warming shelter had served an average number uh, four nights. That's about what it was doing, and an average number of people that were staying overnight was four. In uh, January of this year, the total number of nights open was 18, and the average number of people staying overnight was 19. Um, if you look more carefully at January of this year, the statistics are kind of interesting. The, and I must point out that a reason that you're getting a lot more detail is because of, of our operations director, Amanda Cherry Holmes. She's really 
interjected a degree of professionalism that we haven't had in the past. And so we have a lot stronger uh, information with respect to statistics. So if we take the, the January figure there of an average of 19 people staying overnight, uh, the number, the total number in January of locals, not transients, but locals within the city was 38 during that month, the total number. And the total number of transients was 54. She even breaks out the two of the ones that we help were pet owners. Pet owners can create a bit of a problem, or at least are unique. <coughs> so the total number of different people, if you were to stand there all January and check off by name, the number of different people that were, that were uh, helped by the warming shelter it was 94. During the month of January, all of this took place at the Congregational Church. The uh, family uh, operation, which is at the First Baptist Church, was not used because there were no families that appeared or that, that needed to be, or I shouldn't say didn't need to be, but they didn't appear and ask for service. Now I'm going to switch out of January and talk about the season, the winter season in totality to date. For the winter season so far, so that carries over from last year to this year for the winter season, uh, we have had 80 different men helped. So if you kept a tally by name, you'd have 80 names on it. We've had 24 different women helped, two of which were pregnant. We've had four different children helped year to date. And the no total number of different people helped year to date, if you kept a track of all the names, was 108. That's in the two month period, uh, December, January. If we go and take into account uh, the current month, uh, we have been open for 33 nights so far for December and January and this period of, of February. And uh, that means we've been open for a total of 38 nights. So that's a, I wanted to give it to you because it was, it's significantly different than the report I gave you for December compared. In January, the one of the nights we had 33 people. Uh, and the church really kind of handles 20 comfortably, 25 with a stretch. So when you get to 33, it's really hard. Now, retroactively, and perhaps I should have said, said this at the very beginning, when I give you the number of people, that doesn't mean that the person stayed all night. We have some transients, for instance, who just at 11 o'clock say, I want out of here. And we don't say you, you can't leave, but we do say if you leave, you can't come back. As you know, we close the door at 10. So I don't want to give you the impression that this, the numbers I gave you were all the way into the following morning. There's a gradation involved. Would you have any information on the, uh, the First Baptist? Well, when you say information, I know for a fact that there, it wasn't used. Now, the, 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 the reason why is a different area completely, and I'm not quite convinced or not I'm not convinced it's just I don't know but we are we had the board meeting today and we talked about it and we're going to really be looking into it talking to people uh, like family promise who deal a lot with uh, disadvantaged families and the help program which also deals with disadvantaged families to see if we can come up with a better feeling for why that facility isn't being used but at the board meeting I asked Amanda hey are you planning all the time to use that if, in fact, you have a family that needs help? And she said, absolutely, and we can react on a fairly short fuse. We have staff that are ready to volunteer, and we can open it up for a, for a family. It's just that it hasn't been. Do you have many people that spend more than one night there? Yes. And those aren't 
those aren't counted twice, they're just counted once. No, they're, you're right. They're, well, I'm sorry. In one set of statistics, they are counted twice. But when I, I was very careful to read you statistics about different. So when I gave you the numbers for different people, th they were different. But when you take gross number of nights, the bed doesn't care whether it's the same person or another person that's being used. Do you find that local people are using it more than one night? Is that, is that your We do have some local people that use it for more than one night. And I, what I'd point out to the board, too, uh, our, our hosting facility is supposed to be used at the nighttime, you know, from about 6 until 6 the next morning. But what happens is we will have people come and have to leave around by 8 at the latest. But our church opens at 9. We have what's called the gathering place, and it's for members and people to come together in a general setting, and there's games to be played. Well, the people who use the center that night, they just leave and wait an hour, and they're back. So in a way, our church is a day center, especially when it comes to the fact that it, uh, to those days that follow a night when we operate as a warming shelter. There's nothing we can really do about that. We can't stand at the door and say, I'm sorry, you can't come in. We are a church and we are mindful of need, but I'd like you to know that because we're the only game in town, sometimes the church is used in a, in a larger number of hours than you might anticipate, and that impacts on our other church programs. Do you have an idea of how much, how many meals roughly St. James Episcopal is serving? St. James uh, really doesn't. No, I, I have to ask, answer to say no up front. But they do a great job. And let me explain also that our the people who use our facility, we've got a, we've had an understanding with St. James now. They serve early in the afternoon, so people will go there, have dinner, then they'll come down to us at six o'clock. And they've already been fed, and that's cool because we we don't want to replicate or we don't want to recreate the wheel. And the meal at St. James is so much more nutritious and better than we could serve that uh, it makes an awful lot of sense. That St. James operation, uh, as you all know, is staffed by a lot of individuals uh, here in, in Lincoln City. and. To the best of my knowledge, the best that they can get out of it is to deduct the cost of the food from their income tax. They, they put this food together, they put it on the table, and on top of what they do, it gives people an opportunity not only to break bread together, but to talk. And talking is a very important part of dealing with um, the homeless. Very important part. Um, do you have... I was asked, is there a way for people to perform community service with your organization as a way to pay off their debt associated with their the crime that they committed? You'll have to help me a little more, Riley, with your question. If you have community service as part of your release, is it possible that they could volunteer at night to cover those hours needed? Well, we'll take volunteers uh, that meet our, yeah, we don't. Plainly. Yeah, I'm, I'm, what we don't do is we're very careful not to allow a a person who's a transient or a local homeless person who comes in and says, "Hey, you know what I'll do? I could I could take a leadership position." And we don't do that. That, that we don't allow. We have our we have the people that use the facility, and then we have a separate training and vetting uh, procedure for the people who actually do the administration. How many hours a week does does your church, how many hours a week does your church volunteer hours a week, do you think, in total? Oh, Lord. Uh, we have so many programs, Riley. I, I don't know. I'm chair of outreach. It's a great question. I don't keep track of it all, but it would be staggering if you took a look at the total number of hours that our church members spend with uh, Family Promise Help, uh, My Sister's Place, uh, the Seventh-day Adventist operation. Uh, it, we have a, a host of, of uh, 
I mean, there must be at least uh, 15 that my outreach group uh, helps financially on either a monthly or a quarterly basis. And then, of course, it's, it's hard for us to know the volunteer side because our church members don't tell us, well, I'm going to do this. Uh, they just do it. They just do it. Okay. Great. Thank you, Jay. Sure appreciate you. Okay, right. guys. Thank you. Um, anyone else who want to speak didn't sign up or something to say? Seeing none. Uh, announcements or comments by City Council? I have one. That's uh, Minton. Why don't you just speak into the mic? Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, I was contacted by um, Pacific Powers Regional uh, Manager who will be here tomorrow, and she and I are going to meet at 11 o'clock um, here, and I just wanted to offer that up to any other council member. I have been contacted by a lot of people about their bills being so high, and so I've been in contact with um, Alyssa about that, and that's why she wanted to meet with me. So I just want to offer that up to any of you who have also been in contact with a lot of people about their high bills. Anyone else? Just a clarification: Is that an open to the public? No. Um, is it a the public coming to talk to Pacific Power? No. Oh, I, w weren't you doing? Yes, I, w I was trying to help organize a meeting for people who were um, who were very surprised by their high um, electricity bill, and so we were trying to organize a meeting, a public meeting for that. But we made a threshold of 10 people that would confirm before we would actually um, take the space and get set up for it. And we didn't get 10 people. We got seven on one day and six on another. So that wasn't at the threshold we wanted to hit. And so this is a follow-up to all of that effort. Anyone else, please? Um, I just kind of wanted to summarize something that was a statement put out by the Lincoln County Board of Commissioners and the Sheriff reminding us that Lincoln County is a sanctuary county. Um, anyone who doesn't break the law can work and live here. And they reminded us of an Oregon law since 1987 where the county is prohibited from spending public resources or personnel to locate or arrest a person whose only violation is that they are in the country in violation of the federal immigration laws. So I just wanted to know people who are out there that they are supported um, and welcome. Thank you. Anyone else? You're here. Is that it? That's it? I've got a couple of things. All right. Um, this was prior to any public comments before the meeting. Um, I attended the Devil's Lake Water Improvement District board meeting last week and um, was wondering about vendors at City Park. So I'm glad that the subject came to light and I'd like um, some more information at a later date. Um, also was wondering about the Voyage Lake Drive LID. I understood there were some property owners that were having problems with the Public Works Department um, communication. I just received that information today and so I don't have, a, I'm not able to report on that but uh, I, I will um, a little bit later on. We, we approved it. I thought it was all being done, and yeah. <laughs> I was surprised to hear a hiccup. Yeah, if you'll give me a, if you'll give me till tomorrow, I'll find out on that. Like I said, I just learned about it today. Yeah. Thank you. Um, also, I was reading um, the uh, Urban Renewal Report, um, 25 years, and um, it mentioned in there that, well, there was a, a dream, I guess, of a pedestrian bridge over Schooner Creek. And then there was another comment about <coughs> ODOT doing work on the bridge and that the sidewalk would be widened. But I don't think there's any talk of widening the sidewalk with this work that ODOT's doing, is there? Okay. Just wanted to confirm that. And then um, I believe there's some sort of meeting tomorrow at 10 o'clock about people who are 
interested areas. in the eclipse? Yeah, we, well, we sent out several invitations, and we're getting more people than we actually invited okay. uh, to come to our it's the, to come to our planning meeting. The purpose of it is to coordinate our work with those other agencies that will be affected by um, the the influx of people on the 21st. So, the meeting is at 10 a.m. And uh, I think we'll probably have to move it into here because I think we've outgrown where the room we were going to be in. So the if public isn't won't be invited to speak, but is welcome to attend. Is sure, that? we're not going to turn anybody away, but it's not a council meeting, and so it's it's not a public forum where people can speak. Uh, we will be talking about. Uh, um, each aspect of the of the eclipse, what we're preparing to do, then with the different organizations, what they were preparing to do, and how we can coordinate our efforts. Yeah, thank you. Yep. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, just a note: I'll be cooking dinner tomorrow night for Celebrate Recovery at Faith Baptist Church. If you have uh, anyone who's in need of some counseling for drug and addiction problems, or just needs a good hot meal, 6 p.m. Uh, at the north end of town. Uh, apparently, I will be having a State of the City address. Uh, I just found out. Uh, I was kindly invited to that uh, <laughs> by newsletter. Uh, Twenty what? Eighth? Something Tuesday, like that. Tuesday, the last Tuesday. Tuesday, the twenty-eighth, eleven forty-five, Cultural Center. Correct. Right. Okay, so come and join the fun. Eleven forty-five. Eleven forty-five. Thank you. Um, anyone else? That's it. With that, uh, may God bless you all. May God bless Lincoln City. We are adjourned. <laughs>